Amen. It gives me great pleasure again tonight to bring Brother Alejandro up to release, amen, the Word of God on us tonight. Everybody stand. Give honor to the man of God. We love you, brother. Praise God. Praise God. God is so good. Just close your eyes and remain in this time of worship and this time of anointing and this time of solitude before God. Lord Jesus. Lord, we are hungry before you. We are hungry for a breakthrough, for a miracle. But above all, Lord, we are hungry for your presence. That's what we're hungry for. And we came here tonight to get more of your presence. Lord, this is supernatural, Lord. Lord, what is, what is happening right now? What is unfolding right in front of our eyes? What you're doing, Lord. What The miracles you did last night and the things you're going to do tonight are supernatural. And we give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. And we welcome you, Holy Spirit. Have your way. Have your way tonight. As we receive your word and as we get into the time of worship and we get into the time of impartation and as we receive prayer and, and we uh, come forward and receive more, more from you, Lord. And we just pray that you will fill us up. May there be an overflow tonight. May our cups, Lord, overflow with your presence. May our cups, Lord, overflow with joy the presence, with the anointing, with the, the power of the Holy Spirit. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. And we're ready to receive in Jesus' name. You all may be seated. Thank you. Hallelujah. Come on, let's, let's give a mighty hand to the Lord tonight. Amen. Wow. We almost have a packed house tonight. I mean, that is supernatural. Monday evening to have all these people here. I mean, you are all hungry for the Lord. And if you came out on a Monday night, you are desperate for something. You are desperate for a breakthrough. You are desperate for a genuine encounter with God. I mean, you had other things to do. You could have done anything tonight, but you... Preferred, and you decided to be here tonight to receive a touch from God. And God is not going to disappoint you. He never does. He's not going to let you down. He never does. Amen. He is in this place. The presence of God is so strong in this place. It's so heavy in this place. You know, just tell your neighbor next to you with a big Colgate smile, God is about to surprise you. Come on, tell your neighbor. With a big Colgate smile, you know. God is about to surprise you. I was down in Miami uh, last year and a brother came after the service, shook my hand and said, Oh, thank you so much for promoting our company. And I said, Really? What, why is that? He said, Well, I represent Colgate in, in South America and when you said give someone a Colgate smile you are basically giving us free advertisement I said well wasn't our purpose I didn't know but anyways <laughs> it just happened I'm blessed to be here tonight and uh, let me tell you something I, I've been seeing so many miracles lately God has been moving in the nations uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was in New Zealand where I saw incredible miracles. I was in a small uh, city called Taranga, which is in the northern part of New Zealand. And we saw incredible miracles, incredible healings. Many people who had dislocated shoulders, problems in their, in their spinal cord, and problems with their arms and their legs and tumors and cancer and all sorts of problems. And God healed many of them. And uh, the day after, on Monday, I went back home. And on Tuesday, my brother-in-law rang us and said, uh, Would you like to come and have a family day? And we'll go and, and, and go jet skiing uh, just for a day. Enjoy the weather. 
Perth weather is very nice, especially around this time. Perth, Australia, the weather is really nice because it's summer and it's just clear skies, blue skies, beautiful days. You know, temperature is really nice in the 70s, really nice around daytime, even nighttime. It can drop a little bit because it's desert weather and so it can drop a few degrees at nighttime. And um, I said, sure. So we went, we got ready, my wife and I and our baby girl, we all went to have a family picnic, a family day. And uh, my father-in-law went along with him, with uh, my brother-in-law, and they went for a ride. And they were, I mean, they were going really fast. They were probably doing 65 miles an hour, you know, 120 kilometers an hour. If I get, if I got that right, 120 kilometers an hour, I don't know how, if, if I converted up right, I think it's like 60, 65 miles an hour. And, uh, and then the second ride, uh, I was supposed to be in the second ride. And so my father-in-law got off the, the jet ski and said, come, come Alex, it's your turn. And, and he, you know, I had my uh, life jacket and it was kind of loose and he tightened it up and he said, make sure it's tight. And I'm like, but I'm suffocating in here, you know. It's too tight. So you never know. You never know. So he put it. He made sure it was tight. And uh, I grabbed my wallet. And I put it in, in, you know, in one of those compartments the jet ski has. And I just, I just thought I better do this just for, for safety and just for preparation. Because you never know. And I had that thought in my mind. You never know. And you know when the enemy keeps saying that and, and that voice of fear and that spirit of fear comes to you and it's like you have that idea, like that idea is in your mind, in the back of your mind. You never know. I could have an accident today. That could, something awful could happen. And the enemy was planning this all along. But God planned, God protected me and protected all my belongings. I left my iPhone with my wife, so praise God for that. Otherwise, I would have been crying. You know how much we care about our phones, right? So I left my iPhone with her, and I said, you never know. That was my words. You never know. Here you go. You never know. And uh, then I put the, the wallet away, and uh, my brother-in-law said, hold on tight. And I said, Matthew, please make sure you don't go too fast. Now, I don't like uh, speed, especially uh, on a jet ski ride. I, I, I enjoy speed, you know, when, you know, when I enjoy speed when you're driving a, a vehicle, but like, that's, you know, safe speed, not crazy, reckless speed. I don't enjoy speed, all right? So, um, and I believe when you're going more than 75 miles an hour, the angels get off your car and they go somewhere else, you know? <laughs> So I said, Matthew, and he had this cheeky smile, and he looked at me, and he said, it's going to be all right. And I said, are you sure? And, and he said, yep, just hold on to me tightly. And I said, sure. And I grabbed, you know, onto him, and I was holding onto him, and he took off, and I mean, he went for it. And he was doing probably, uh, you know, 80Ks, 90Ks, which would have been, uh, what, 55 miles an hour 50 miles an hour and he took this turn he was going really fast and he lost control and we both fell in the water at the same time and uh, you know it could have been a really bad accident and I could have injured myself uh, severely but praise God it was nothing bad only two fingers I broke two fingers so two fingers that uh, were fractured during the accident, but praise God, it could have been worse, you know? I could have broken my leg or my back or my neck, you know, I could have done something really bad, uh, but praise God, He protected me. Uh, we both, uh, uh, you know, fell off uh, at that speed, and we hit the water at that speed, and w you know that when you hit the water at that speed, that the water is like cement, you know, it's like concrete. You hit it, and, and it's like a motorcycle accident. It's actually compared, when you have a jet ski accident, it's compared to a motorcycle accident. That's how bad a jet ski accident can be. And so, I didn't realize I had fractured my fingers, and I was floating in the water. I was in a lot of pain, but had no idea what had happened. 
And uh, I'm not a professional swimmer. And he was like a few feet away. And he's like, come, swim, swim. And I'm, 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 I'm trying to tell him that I don't know how to swim, right? And <laughs> like, I'm here, you know. If you don't come and rescue me, this is it, you know. I'm, I'm going to see the Lord today. And I'm not planning that. So I managed to get the attention of somebody. Uh, somebody was fishing. I managed to get their attention. A fishing boat came and, 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 and they shouted. And they, they said, hey, mate, are you all right? And I said, oh, not really. And so my brother-in-law came quickly. He thought I was playing a joke, and I wasn't. I was really serious, and I was shaky because of the whole experience, traumatized because of the experience. And I was looking at him like, <laughs> you do. I didn't know how to swim. Why didn't you come and help me? You know, you were waiting. Anyways, he's 22, so that explains. Anyways, I'm 28. So he wanted to just give me this thrill. And he sure did. And uh, yeah, when I, I got to uh, where the family was and you know, got to the shore and uh, checked my fingers and they were really swollen and they had to take me to the emergency room. And anyways, I've been dealing with this for the last three weeks. So it's been a nuisance. It's been painful. And yesterday you saw me wearing a brace, but um, my fingers were sort of healing crooked. And today I went to see a doctor, praise God, God's favor. He worked it all out. I went to see a doctor and uh, they put the splints on. So I'm believing for my miracle. I'm believing for my miracle. You know, it's an oxymoron because I pray for a lot of people and I see healings and miracles around the world and it just doesn't make sense. It's an irony that, you know, I am dealing with this right now, right? And uh, sometimes you just gotta, you just gotta give God the glory. Understand, you, sometimes you don't understand why God is doing what He's doing, but sometimes you just gotta, you just gotta surrender and say, God, have your way in my life. Everything works out for good. Everything works out for good. You may not understand it, but everything works out for the good of the saints. Amen? So uh, just open your heart. Open your spirit. You know, don't let anything be a hindrance point in your life. Don't let anything, don't let anything stop you from receiving this miracle right now. Amen? So the Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 6. And I want to talk about signs and the Holy Spirit. Signs and the Holy Spirit. I want to talk about living in the end times and, and, and the importance of having and carrying the power of the Holy Spirit. The importance of living in a constant ongoing relationship with the Holy Spirit. It's so important for us as believers to be filled up with the Holy Spirit. For us to have a contact, an ongoing contact with the Holy Spirit. For us to be completely uh, full of the Holy Spirit. Filled up with the Holy Spirit. Whatever you want to call it. We need to always be aware that we're living in a time, in a season uh, where the enemy is, you know, is running out of time. And the enemy is invading uh, uh, the earth with darkness and wickedness. And, and I mean, the things that we are seeing in this world are scary, frightening. But greater is the one who is in us. Amen. Greater is the one who is in us. Greater is the King of Kings. The Lord of Lords. Greater is Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah El Shaddai. Uh, he's the provider. Amen? Amen. He is your provider. Amen. You know, I was telling folks in New Orleans, in, in Pearl River at Pastor Jerry's church this uh, yesterday morning, I said, the greatest privilege we have is that we get to have a private audience with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, who, by the way, happens to be our Father. Hello? Isn't that awesome? So we happen to be his children we happen to be the inheritors of the great blessing we happen to be you know redeemed saved by grace 
and we happen to have a king who is our Lord, who is our Savior, who is our Father. Amen? So when we understand that, when we can understand those two dimensions, I'm his child, but I'm also part of the kingdom. I'm, he is my Father, but he's also my King. I'm going to worship Him as my King. I'm going, to, I'm going to live in devotion. I'm going to live my whole life sold out, devoted to Him because He's my King. And He's my Lord. But I'm also going to spend time with Him because He's my Father. He's my Daddy. And I can just go into His presence and get filled up with the Holy Spirit. I can just go into His presence and have an encounter with God. It doesn't matter how I'm feeling. You can be feeling cranky, grumpy, upset. You know, you can be uh, soaking in a lemon. Hello? A lot of people, they come to church and they have that face like they're soaking in a lemon. Right? Sucking in a lemon. And, 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 and they look all bitter and upset. And, and they don't want to be there. But it doesn't matter what your face is. God can change your circumstances today. He can change your life. He can change your family. He can change your finances. He can change your business. He can change your reality. Come on. Your reality doesn't, does not determine your future. Can I say that again? Your reality does not determine your future. I'm going to say it again. Your reality does not determine your future. What you're going through right now is temporary. What you're going through right now is not going to be forever. It's not your future. It's not your tomorrow. Your today may look gloomy and dark, but God has a, a promise for you and God is going to get you out of this crisis. He's going to get you out of this misery. He's going to get you out of this wilderness and your reality today may be dry, may be gloomy, may be dark, but God is about to turn things around, surprise you, and give you a better tomorrow. Tell your neighbor next to you, your tomorrow is going to be glorious. You believe that? Or are you just saying that? Are we speaking Christianese or are we speaking faith? Hello? Faith. Kingdom. You know, people are watching us right now all over the world. We're live streaming this service. Praise God. Can you just say hello? Hey. I announced it on Facebook, so I don't know how many of my friends are watching, but hello. So the Bible says in Acts chapter 1, verse 6, Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom, of, the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. Number eight. This is a very relevant verse. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Power. Say with me, power. power. Now, that word times in Greek is the word chronos. Chronos. And we get different words. Chronology, chronic, chronicles from that word chronos. And uh, I may not be pronouncing it right because I'm not a Greek teacher, all right? So don't hold me accountable for that. I just, I'm telling you how it sounds, how I'm reading it, chronos, right? So I have some Greek friends who after the meetings, they call me up and they say, you didn't pronounce it like we normally pronounce it. And they give me a hard time. So I tell them, well, I'm not Greek. So this word, times, seasons we're so concerned right now because we are looking at the world and, and the state of the world and, and the 
political state of, uh, state of the world and the financial state of the world. And we're looking at what's happening. We're looking at all the signs uh, that God is displaying before our eyes. And we're looking at everything that's going on worldwide. And we're asking ourselves a question. Are we living in the end times? And the, and the answer is yes, we're living in the end times. Are we living in the, in the 11th hour? And the answer is yes, we're living in the 11th hour. Do we have very little time before something happens? And the answer is yes, we have very little time. And so when you look at all the, the, the signs and you look at all the harbingers and you look at all the things that are happening right now as we speak, you know, when you look at everything that's going on in the world, whether it's in the political field, in the, in the, uh, you know, in the spiritual field, and uh, you look at all these things happening, you will realize sooner or later that we're living in the end times. Hello? How many of you have heard of, uh, I mean, there was a video on YouTube lately and, 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 and people were talking about it and, 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 and it was very popular and they were talking about these trumpet sounds they were hearing all over the world. They heard those trumpet sounds in Canada. They heard them in the U.S. and different parts here in the U.S. They heard them in Australia and in different parts of Australia, different parts of the U.K. And, and, and that's a, a phenomenon that a lot of people can't really explain because it was supernatural. You know, the scientists may say, well, it's something to do with the earth rotation and the energy and blah, blah, blah. And they will always find, uh, a, a, you know, an, an answer that is logical and that can be self-explanatory so that people can understand what's happening they will never give glory or credit to God because they don't know they don't know the supernatural unless they are believers and spirit-filled scientists amen so we're living in a time where we need to be filled up with the Holy Spirit we need to carry the presence of God because the hour is coming where, you know, churches, and it's already happening, are shutting down the Holy Spirit. They're no longer preaching about the Holy Spirit. They're no longer preaching on the anointing. They're no longer preaching on, on holiness. And so you're not getting fed with the right food. And a lot of Christians in America are malnourished at this, day, at this time. Amen. Hello? Which is concerning. It's troubling. Why? Because a lot of Christians are going to church every Sunday and they're getting drops of milk. They're getting messages that are highly motivational, that are based on psychological facts and, you know, statistics and this and that and things that will apply to day-to-day -day basis. And people say, well, that's great because that can help me to some degree. But when it comes to your spirit, when it comes to your soul, when it comes to the depth of of your spirit then those issues are not being dealt with and those issues are still unsettled and the enemy is going to take advantage of that and if you're not being fed with the right food then your spirit is going to get weaker and weaker to the point that you're not going to have the right vitamins and the right nutrients in your spirit in order to withstand the attacks of the enemy hello hello so we need to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. We need to be filled up with the Holy Spirit. We need to be praying at all times. If you're not getting the right food, if you're not getting the right source of nutrition, you know, in America there is a revolution happening right now, especially in the food industry. And people are getting fed up with all the, uh, all the uh, you know, pesticides and all the chemicals and all the things that they're putting in the food. And so people are going for all their sources of food. They're going for organic. They're going to a more healthy, uh, you know, healthier options. They're going, they're eating salads. They're getting, uh, you know, hooked into these diets because they're realizing that the world is up to no good and they're putting all these chemicals in their food and people are getting cancers and getting, getting tumors and getting sick and, you know, hospitals are getting crowded every day. Pharmaceutical companies are making billions of dollars out of people's ignorance. People are hooked into pills and tablets and all sorts of medication. And, and, and you may think, well, that's all conspiracy. It's not. It's already happening. Hello? It's already happening. And so, what are we supposed to do? 
Keep eating the same stuff. No. Look for other sources of food. And so that's why people are getting really smart and they're going into, you know, organic and healthy choices. And you probably think, well, that's too expensive. I'm not able to afford that. But, you know, God is going to show you how to work around this and how to beat this system of the Antichrist that wants to get people sick and wants to get people in the hospitals. Hello? I mean, I... I I don't know about you, but some of the things that you read on the internet, you probably say, well, if it's off the internet, I don't believe it. But some of the things that you read which are legitimate and are authentic, and you read some of these uh, documents that you know come from the United Nations and some of the research you do, you realize that there is like a world population agenda, world a population control agenda in place where they want to cut the numbers and they want to, you know, they want to, they want to keep the same uh, type of food, which is basically garbage and it's getting people sick. Now, why am I going down this rabbit trail? I don't know. But what I know is that if you don't get the right sources of food, if you don't get the, the, the anointing, if you don't get the power, if you don't get the word, if you don't get the rhema, if you don't get the revelation, if you don't spend time with God, then your spirit is going to become mal- malnourished. And before you know it, you're going to have all these deficiencies. Hello? How many of you love to go to the doctor and get a blood test done? No. Because you don't want to be told what you are deficient on. Right? You don't want to be told that you're deficient on vitamin D and vitamin C and vitamin E and, and you need this and you need that and you need to take this tablet and this other tablet. I mean, it's scary when you go to the doctor and they tell you you're deficient on this and that and the other. And you're like, wow, I didn't know. I, I prefer not to know. Hello? I prefer not to know. I prefer not to know what's wrong with me. Hello? I mean, I'm talking to the man here. We don't want to know what's wrong with us sometimes. That's why we don't go to the doctor because it's, it's, it's really frightening. Hello? It is frightening. And then once we realize that, well, there's nothing I can do. I better go and visit the doctor. Then we go because that's the last resource. Right? Now, we are living in a time where many churches are compromising the word. They're watering down the word. They're compromising the message. And they're giving a quick messages to fix problems that are huge, that are massive. And people are not getting fed spiritually. And they're not getting fed. You know, their spirits are not getting fed. They're going to this church a Sunday to Sunday. And praise God for all these, all these you know, thousands of people that are going to church. At least they're making an effort. They're going to church. And they're getting fed something but it's sad it's unfortunate that many of these people are going back home and they're they're the same they're sick they're you know they're feeling disappointed discouraged they're not making sense out of their own lives they don't know what to do that you know Monday comes and they feel depressed and they feel discouraged and they 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 experience no breakthrough they experience no freedom they walk in no freedom they walk in no miracle they walk in no breakthrough because they are not getting the right source of food Hello. But the moment you start pumping all these vitamins and all these, you know, the right foods and the right uh, nutrients and the right vitamins and the right things into your body, then your body's going to respond and your body's going to become strong and stronger. And then before you know it, you're going to be a very healthy person. How many of you want to be healthy here? Come on, raise your hand. How many of you are tired of being on painkillers? Come on, raise your hand. How many of you are tired of being on different tablets? Come on, raise your hand. How many of you are tired of visiting doctors? Come on, raise your hand. How many of you are tired of going from hospital to hospital and getting different opinions? Come on, raise your hand. God wants to heal you tonight. He wants to set you free tonight. He wants to give you a breakthrough tonight. He wants to fill you with His Holy Spirit tonight. And all you need is to have an encounter with God. Hello. I tell people, you will save so much money. And you will... So you will save yourself from so many headaches and problems. And you will save yourself from spending hours doing counseling if you have an encounter with God. Hello? 
You're like, Pastor, can I get some counseling? Can, I, can we get together? Can we catch up? I, I believe in counseling. But some of the areas that you need help, some of the areas that you need help with can be actually dealt in the secret place. If you spend time in the secret place, if you spend time with God, if you spend time face to face with God, God is going to help you solve some of those problems that seem like mountains to you, that seem like, like, like that, that seem like honor, like, you know, undefeatable. God is going to bring them down. Come on, church. God is going to bring those mountains down. He's going to flatten those mountains down because He is giving you the power and the authority to overcome. Come on, church. He's giving you the power and the authority to speak by faith and to tell your body, body align according to the Word of God. I'm going to believe it. You know, we're living in, in, in the end times. Things are happening. We know we can see it. What's happening in Syria? What just happened with the blood moons? A lot of people are discrediting the blood moons saying, Oh, that was all, you know, conspiracy and, and it did nothing happen. The, the world didn't end. Who said the world was going to end? Hello? And they're blaming Brother Hagee. And they're blaming all these prophets and saying false prophets. and this. Save your words. No one is saying the world is going to end. In fact, they never said the world was going to end. What they said was that this was a sign of the end times. And so the media turned around, twisted those words, and the media said, Oh, these uh, Pentecostal preachers are saying that the world was going to end after the last blood moon and nothing happened. And they mocked us worldwide because the media has become so liberal. Hello? They basically misquoted. Brother Hagen and, and all the other prophets, Jonathan Kahn. I believe God has chosen Jonathan Kahn as a vessel here in America to proclaim the news, to proclaim the truth, to proclaim liberty. Do you know who I'm talking about? The guy who went to Capitol Hill and prophesied and was standing before all the Congress members and all the, the you know, all, all the, uh, the, the politicians in the White House. And he basically prophesied and he said, if you guys don't repent... Something is going to happen. You need to repent. You know, and, and a lot of people are blaming and bashing him, saying he, he's a false prophet. Now, let me tell you something. What he said about the blood moons, actually, when you look into the blood moons, it was a, a divine sign. And right during that period, especially at the end of September, you probably didn't see the market collapsing here in America. But in other parts of the world, the market was severely, severely affected. In fact, the market lost billions and billions of dollars. They were wiped out overnight. Well, praise God, He gave us grace and He gave us time. And you know, we had that time. We still have time. Tell your neighbor, we still have time. You know, we are in the 11th hour and God is giving us time. Amen. So a lot of people are saying, no, that's all, you know, that's all garbage. I don't want to hear that. The end of the world, that's all fear-mongering. I'm not here to preach fear-mongering. I'm here to preach the news of the gospel. I'm here to tell you that the Holy Spirit is available as a gift so that when you come into the presence of God, you may be feeling sick. You may be feeling defeated. You may be feeling overwhelmed by all these situations in your life. But if you have an encounter with God, if you just have an encounter with God, if you just have have an encounter with God your whole life is going to take a U-turn come on you may be feeling like a wreck you know, you may be feeling, I'm, I'm disappointed, I'm disillusioned, I have not uh, obtained what I wanted to obtain, I have not done what I wanted to do in my life, I, I, I've been not successful, I've been this and that, I've been losing, and, and, and the enemy has been taking advantage of all these situations. You know, the enemy is a, is a perfect liar, he's a pathetic liar, how many of you know that, right? That's a very strong word, but I only use it for the enemy, he's a, he's a liar, hello? He's a liar. But my God, Yeshua, the Lord Jesus, your Savior, He is the Father of all truths. 
And if the Bible says that he's my healer, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to embrace that truth. And if the Bible says that he's my provider, I'm going to embrace that truth. Come on, church. And if the Bible says that he is my companion, I'm going to embrace that truth. Come on, church. And if the Bible says that he is my, my father, my carer, I'm going to embrace that truth. No matter what the enemy is saying, on the other hand, I don't care what the enemy is saying. I'm going to shut the enemy's mouth because I'm going to listen to what God is saying. Hello. How many of you here watch Tom and Jerry? Hello. You remember the angel, the little angel and, and, the, and the little demon, the little angel mouse and the little demon mouse. You remember that? You know, remember that battle that Tom had in his mind because Tom wanted to, Tom is the cat, right? Yeah, he wanted to go after Jerry and he never succeeded and he felt so disappointed that every time he, you know, Jerry was smarter than Tom, that's for sure. And uh, there were times where he was so close to get a hold of Jerry, but he never did. And all, he was always battling with these thoughts. And you know, some Christians are like that, like Tom. They, they have like these voices, you know. They're battling these voices. And I'm not saying you're a cat, but I'm saying, you know, I'm saying some Christians can have like these voices in, in their back of their mind and they don't know what to listen, whether to listen God, to listen the word of God or to listen the enemy. You need to listen to God. Hello? You need to listen to God. You need to listen to His Word. You need to pay attention to what He's saying. The enemy is, is a loser. He, he is not going to get anywhere if you have the anointing. Hello? If you have the anointing, he's not going to get anywhere with you because he knows that you are, you have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb and you are not worth investing his time because he knows that you are sold out for Jesus. Come on, church. And so he's not going to invest his time trying to derail you or distract you because he knows that you are focused and you have a mission and you are very intentional about your relationship with God. Amen? So the enemy is not, I mean, he might come and tempt you and tap you in the shoulder and sometimes whisper lies in your ears and tell you, you know, how ugly you are and all of that, which, by the way, are lies. Hello? How many of you look yourself in the mirror and say, first thing in the morning, oh my goodness, I'm such a good looking person. Hello? <laughs> let your wife or your spouse say that, Amen. You're not, you, you don't wake up the, and, and, and the first thing you say is, I'm such an ugly looking person. That's the enemy. The enemy, if you're thinking like that, then the enemy is really playing with your mind. Because no one that God has created according to his image is ugly. Hello? No one that God has created according to his image is, you know, is less than anything. God has created you for a purpose. God has created you. He has a design, a unique design for your life. And he has a unique ministry and a unique gift for your life. And the moment you understand who you are in Christ, in that moment, the enemy has lost his game. Come on, church. The moment you understand who you are in Christ. Come on. We know we're living in the end times. Things are happening. Earthquakes, famine, wars, rumors of war, everywhere battles happening. I mean, we are living in the end times. And whether you like to hear it or not, it's happening. Hello? And we wake up every morning to some tragic news and we wake up and realize, wow, we are so close. It's like the clock is ticking and, and we can hear, we can hear the clock ticking and we know that something is happening in the world. Even though you feel so safe in America and you feel so protected and you feel like this land is so blessed. But let me tell you something, what's really going on, the roots of what's really going on are rotten. It's like you're living in a, in a bubble and you're thinking yeah, everything is great, but not everything is great. Hello? The economy is not great. The morality of this nation is not great. The families in, in this nation are not doing great. 
You know, there's so much happening right now. We need to pray for, for revival. We need to pray for another awakening. We need to pray for another wave of the Holy Spirit to wash this land, to, to redeem this land, to purge this land out of this misery. Come on, church. We need to rise up and we need to pray that God will wash this land with His precious blood. I don't know if you're getting excited about this, but I believe this is the hour for the church in America. Can I say it again? For the church, for the remnant, for the chosen ones. Don't misquote me. I'm not saying God is going to restore. I believe he want, if He wants to restore America again, He will do it. But I'm not going to say like you know Donald Trump, let's make America great again. Repent. Go back to, to the first love. Hello. Do what God is asking you to do. And if he decides to make this nation a great, he, great again, he will do it in his timing. But he, at this point, and you may think we are the greatest nation in the world. What are you talking about? Well, the things that we are seeing right now in this nation are not really the best things in the world. Hello? And I'm not saying America is not great. I'm saying America needs a revival. Hello? I'm not saying America's not great. I'm saying America needs a savior. America needs a redeemer. And we know who that redeemer is, is Jesus Christ. Come on, church. We know who that redeemer is, is Joshua. You know, I'm getting excited because Franklin Graham is about to launch a tour in 2016. And he's going all over America. And he's going to be preaching repentance. He's going to be preaching to the whole continent. To the whole nation of America. And this is one of the, the tours. You know, Billy Graham is 97 years old. You know, he's, he's, he hasn't given up. He's always preached the truth. And now his son, Franklin Graham, who is not politically correct. Hello? And the media does not like him at all. Hello? And the media thinks that he is not, you know, a good example or representation of Billy Graham ministries because Billy Graham was so friendly you know let me tell you something the anointing that Billy Graham had upon his life or still have because he still carries that anointing amen it was unique but I believe God has you know given Franklin this prophetic anointing to confront sin in this nation hello God has given Franklin this prophetic anointing and only the prophet can actually rise up and with boldness and authority and say, look, you may think that everything is going great, but not, not really. Not everything is going great. We need to repent. We need to go back to our first love. We need, we need God to heal the land. We need revival. We need, we need mercy. We really need God to do something before it's too late. Come on, church. Don't sleep. Oh my goodness, I'm now speaking like a prophet. I'm preaching like a prophet. Sounding like a, one of those New Testament prophets. Hello? I didn't say Old Testament, I said New Testament. So that's good, hey. It is not for you to know the times. A lot of people are desperate to know when Christ is going to return. And so a lot of people were predicting dates and setting dates. Don't predict any date. You know, and if you are following or listening to someone who is trying to predict a date, I'm going to ask you to please stop doing that. Because Jesus said, no one knows the hour or the time. And so if you are so keen in knowing the date and the time, and if you are so keen in learning about the date, let me tell you something. You better go back to the Scriptures and read that verse where it says, No one knows the hour and the day, only my Father. Not even the angels. Not even the angels. And a lot of people are, you know, grabbing verses and the scriptures and they're coming up with all of these uh, mathematical equations and saying, well, if Jesus said this, if Ezekiel says that, if Daniel says that, then, you know, we can come up with a number, with a date. And people are fascinated and they want to come up with a date. And the media keep, keeps mocking the believers. 
Oh, you all say that, you know, Jesus was going to return on September 29th and the, the world was going to end on September 29th. Well, we're still here. And in New Zealand, a newspaper in New Zealand mocked the Christian population worldwide and said, well, we're still here. It's September 29th. Over there may be September 28th, but we're still here. That's, you know, the, the enemy is taking advantage of, of all this nonsense, you know, and all this fear and people going about and, you know, predicting dates and saying things. No one is predicting a date. We know that Jesus said no one knows the hour and the time. However, Jesus didn't say no one knows the signs. Right. Hello, can I make that clear again? Jesus never said no one knows the signs. In fact, he gave us a list of signs and he put them in Matthew 24 and he said, look, when these things happen, know that your Redeemer, your redemption is at hand. Know that your Redeemer is coming soon. Know that these things are going to happen before preceding his coming. Amen. Hello? So praise God Jesus said that. Hello? And I praise God. You know what I praise God for? I praise God the fact that Jesus said no one knows the hour and the, and the, and the day because other, otherwise we would have so many loony tunies trying to come up with dates. Hello? Right, we already do. People are coming up with dates and saying Jesus is going to come back this day and this other day. And the world is, you know, listening to us. And that's why they've been disappointed over and over and over by these, you know, crazy date predictors that are saying we are setting a date. We know when he's coming back. What we know in the Bible is we don't know when he's coming back. However, the signs are being fulfilled. We are leaving in the 11th hour. And it's time for us to prepare for the, the coming of something hallelujah come on it's time for us to prepare so that we have enough oil so that we have enough power come on church so that we have enough water come on church can I have a glass can I have a glass I just want to illustrate something here hallelujah I feel the anointing I feel the anointing we need to be constantly we need to be filled up with the Holy Spirit. We need to be constantly. Well, this is going to be uh, interesting. Uh, it's going to have a different color. It's not going to be water. It's going to be brownish. And it's going to be like coffee. I may, I may be able to come up with a different type of coffee. I may, I may be able to sell it. Thank you, brother. We are, we are like, we are the vessels. We carry the anointing. We carry the power of the Holy Spirit wherever we go, don't we? So we need to be filled up with the Holy Spirit. But if we only get enough, this is what's going to happen. We're only going to reach a certain point where the anointing is going to remain there. But the enemy is going to keep doing this every day. He's going to keep bashing us. It's going to keep moving us. Hello? Did you see that? Water went everywhere. He's going to keep, you know, rattling us and shaking us. Hello? Can you see that? Praise God is not oil. It's just water. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hello? He's going to keep doing that. This is you in the storm. And if you don't get filled up, you're going to keep getting empty and emptier. Hello? But what happens? I don't know if I'm going to be able to fill it up. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm going to need more water. Thank you, Jesus. Can you stand here with me? Thank you, Jesus. You're not going to get wet. <laughs> Believe me. And if you get wet, it's just water. It's just water. All right. Yes. Ready. So if you get if you keep getting filled up with the power, with the word, with prayer, this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen. You're going to overflow. Come on, church. You're going to overflow. I need more water. I need more water. 
And even if the enemy keeps rattling you, come on, come on. Even if the enemy keeps tempting you and shaking you, you will never go empty. Come on, church. Come on, church. It's just water. Thank you. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Oh, I feel the anointing. Thank you, Jesus. Now I'm going to have to replace my splints. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We need the Holy Spirit in this time. We need to go into this, this secret place and pray and, and get recharged and get empowered and get more of Him. When, when you're feeling dry, thirsty, almost drained, you're feeling like you're running out of options, you're running out of energy, you're running out of power, you're feeling like, you know, like a complete wreck, you come into His presence. Let me tell you something. If you come into His presence, your life will never be the same. You may be feeling like, oh my goodness, I am such a loser. I, I, I'm, I'm dragging myself into this place. I don't feel like it. But here I am, Jesus. Here I am. I surrender. And the moment you surrender, the angels of the Lord are going to come down. The, and the angels of the Lord are going to take all the burdens, all the affliction, all the problems, all the sicknesses, all the infirmities. Come on, church. And before you know it, you're going to be in power. And you're going to get out of this place renewed. Empowered with a new word, with new ideas, new strategies for this time, for this season. But you shall receive power. You shall receive the dunamis of the Holy Spirit. You shall receive power. And what do you do with that power? Do you keep it? No, the power is not for you alone. The power is not for your own enjoyment alone. The power is not just for you to have a great time. I'm going to go and have a drink at church. It's not just for you to have a great time at church and roll on the floor and have a laugh and, you know, have a breakthrough and a miracle. The power is not for your own enjoyment alone. The power is for you to go and win the lost. Come on, church. The power is for you to go and witness to people and tell people, you know what? Jesus is real we need to know the realness of the power but unless we know it unless we taste it unless we come into his presence you know Catherine Coleman used to say every time she walked on stage she would she used to say this and it was such a powerful moment she said please in front of thousands of people please do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. He's all I have in this world. All I have in this world is the Holy Spirit. In short, she was not in that at that point in her ministry she wasn't married she was traveling she didn't have a lot of friends I mean she had a big ministry but she was basically doing a lot of things on her own and you know she didn't have a lot you know she wasn't married she didn't have a family she didn't have children she said this is all I have how many of you know that we need the Holy Spirit every day we're living in the end times. You know, things are happening in the world that are crazy, that are insane. And we need to have enough power to withstand. We need to have enough power to stand in the middle of the storm. And like Jesus did, you know, just, get, just uh, raise our hands and, and be confident and say, Storm, storm, be at peace. Calm down. You know, we need to have enough authority to, to face the storm and say, Storm, turn around. I'm not going away. I am not being stopped. I am not being delayed. I am not being held back. My purpose, my destiny, my promised land, what God has promised me, what God has given me, what God has given me as, as my assurance is going to take place. And it, the, the, the devil is not going to snatch it away. The devil is not going to rob me anymore. The devil is not going to take it from 
from me. I'm going to stand up. I'm going to believe. I'm going to be confident that God is my provider. Come on, church. I'm going to believe that God is my healer. I'm going to believe that I'm going to stand in front of the storm and I'm going to stop the storm. Come on, church. I'm going to believe that I'm going to walk on dry ground. Come on, church. I'm going to believe that God can bring fire from heaven and consume the offering. Come on, church. I'm going to believe that I'm going to walk around the walls and the walls are going to come down. They're going to crumble down. Come on, church. I'm going to believe that I can do, I can walk, I can walk on dry ground. Hallelujah. I'm going to believe that He can part the, the sea. Your mortgage, your issues, your problems, your family, your financial hardships, it's not a big deal to God. And you're probably thinking, this is, this is huge. I'm, I'm not able to overcome this. You're talking about the end times. You're talking about the end of the world. But I'm facing this storm right now. I'm facing this huge storm. I, 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 I'm, I'm facing this legal problem. I'm facing this legal battle. I'm dealing with banks. I'm dealing with mortgage companies. I'm dealing with all of these providers. And they want to. They really want to cut my head. They really want to. Really. They want to, uh, they want to steal from me. They want to cripple me. No one is going to cripple you. Because you. You are going to move forward. I said you are going to move forward. No one is going to cripple you because you have the power of the Holy Spirit. No one is going to stop you because you have God on your side. Come on, church. No one is going to stop you because you have the Word of God. And as long as you keep your, your vessel, your heart being filled with the Holy Spirit, you're not going to run out of favor every day. You get into your prayer closet. You raise your hands and you say, Lord, I may be empty today, but fill me up again. Hello? Don't wait until the light comes on. You know, a lot of people wait until the light comes on and, and it's too late. And they run out of gas. Hello? They put like little bits and little bits and they go to the petrol station. I, I know, I know that, you know, you probably think, well, I don't have enough money to fill up my tank and I wish I'd, I'd have the money to do it. But it's not about the money, it's about trusting God. Hello? And you, and you may be thinking, well, I don't have the money right now. But uh, in, the, in the spiritual paradigm, you know, a lot of people, what they do is they just get a little drop of the anointing every Sunday morning. And they, and they, they don't get filled up during the week. And as I said yesterday, church is not about Sunday morning. Church, you don't do church. You are the church. And you walk in the presence of God. And you leave out your Christianity. Not on Sunday morning. You leave out your Christianity from Monday to Saturday. Come on, church. You leave out your Christianity when you going to the grocery store when you go into the bank that's when you are supposed to be the light of the world hello can I get a witness so you don't just leave out your Christianity on Sunday morning when everything is great and everybody's shaking your hand and some people don't even shake your hand and you know you feel like oh Jesus has left me he's forsaken me they don't love me they don't care for me in that church nobody cares for me nobody comes and greet me hello We are not, we don't have time to play those games. We are not children. We need to grow up in the Spirit. I mean, if you've been a Christian for 10 years, 15 years, it doesn't matter if someone comes and shakes your hand. It's not going to validate your calling. It's not going to validate your authority. If somebody comes and gives you a hug, hello? It's not going to validate what God has already given you. If somebody comes and says, oh, you, are, you got it. You are anointed. I don't care if people say I'm anointed or not because that's not going to validate who I am. Hello? I don't care whether people say I liked your message or not. I don't care whether people come in and give me a hug and say, wow, you did a great job because that's not going to validate me. What is going to validate me is when I get into the presence of God and my Father says, you are my son. You are my beloved. Come on, church. That's going to validate us when you get into the secret place and your father comes and he gives you a hug and he gives you the power and the anointing. And before you know it, you come out of that room and you feel like a, like a trooper. You feel like, like a champion. Come on. You feel like you're ready to, to, to overcome. Hallelujah. If 
We're like, bring on the challenge. Hallelujah. Bring it on. I'm not going to back down. I know who I have. I know who I'm, whom I have believed and I have put my trust. I know my trust. My trust is not in this world. My trust is not on the finances of this world, the economy of this world. My, my promises and my future, your future is not subject to the stock market. If your future is subject to the stock market, then you better change the way you see your future because your future is about to change. Hello? If you think your future is subject to the stock market, then you better put your trust somewhere else. Somewhere else. If you think your future is subject to your family or, or people approval or, or what the pastor will do for you or who can facilitate your dream or your vision, then you better look for somebody else's approval. Let me tell you something. Your future is not subject to what people say or what the world is saying or what the circumstances are or what the current climate is. Your future is subject to God's Word. Come on, church. Your future is subject to His promises. And when you believe that, when you embrace His promises... You know, when I, I was dealing with cancer, a tumor rotting between my lungs and my heart. The doctors gave me one year to live. And it was difficult. It was a hardship. It was a, like, a, like I was going through the wilderness. It was awful. You know, my family, my dad was not a Christian. He was a, a drunkard. And, you know, he, he, he was so disappointed. He was so upset when he heard the news that he kept drinking even more. And uh, he would come at night and he would have fights, like verbal fights with my mom. He never touched my mom, praise God. There was never any physical abuse. It was more verbal ab abuse. And uh, uh, during that time, I had to pray and, and stand by faith and believe God for my miracle. Every day I would lock myself in my room and just shed tears and just pray and ask the Lord, weep before the Lord and say, Lord, you are my creator. You are my healer. People are saying they're coming to my church and they're laying hands on me and they're saying that I'm going to preach to the nations. And I was only eight years old. And as I told you yesterday, I used to do some radical things, right? I was a radical little preacher for, I mean, I was radical going out to the, my neighborhood and uh, passing out tracts. One time I went to this Christian rally and I got lost because like Jesus, you know, when he was 12, I got lost and among the crowd and, and my mom was looking for me and she was so desperate and she went to the platform and they had to announce my name. Can you, can, you know, and, and, and no, they had to announce my mom's name because I was frightening and after uh, sharing the gospel with <laughs> dozens of people, and then I, I went to the platform and I said, oh, I'm lost. And my mom is such and such. Could you please call her? And, and she came for me and she was, uh, you know, shaking. She was like, what's going on? What's wrong with you? There's like 10,000 people in this rally and you decided to go share the faith and, and you didn't tell me anything. You just, you just took off with the tracks. I got in trouble that day. But I knew God had called me to do something. And the enemy wanted to take me out. The enemy wanted to, you know what I mean? The enemy wanted to really, he wanted to, he wanted to oppress me. He wanted to kill me, if I can use that word. He wanted to kill me and he wanted to really destroy my family. And from day one, he was, you know, working on me with sicknesses and different symptoms and different viruses and things like that that I had to work through all my childhood because I was a very sick child. Only God, only God who is my healer. He was the one who healed me of so many things because I was such a sick child. I mean, my second home was the hospital and my private transport was the ambulance. That's how bad it was. The enemy really wanted to take me out. But I trusted God's word during that time. And I got on my knees every night. And I said, Lord, you're my healer. You're my provider. And the day before I went to see the doctor, one of the head uh, specialists in that department, 
you know, I prayed my heart out. And I said, Lord, you're my healer. And I heard a service, a service that was happening across the street. I got ready, went to this meeting. My mom helped me and we went to this meeting. And the preacher prophesied some words that I will never forget. He said, you're going to be testifying to the nations of the goodness of God. And I was only eight. The power of God overcame me. The glory of God overwhelmed me. I started weeping. My mom was weeping. I was looking at her. She was a mess. We were both shaking under the presence of God. I went home and I told my mom, I know Jesus has healed me today. I can feel it. I feel different. I have no tumor. I know God has already taken that tumor away. I feel it. I can feel it. She said, well, we better go to the doctors and find out. And so we got up the next morning, went to the doctors, and they did the, the x-ray. And three hours later, this doctor came out. And I mean, this big fellow, and he had a big crucifix. I mean, he was a, he was a, a faithful, dev devoted, you know, devoted Catholic. And he came out and he said, oh, I don't understand what happened here. But come into my office. And he invited us into his office. And he showed us the x-ray. And he said, look, I've been a physician in this hospital for 25 years. And you know that, you know, he... He was actually the best, one of the best doctors in that hospital. And he, he looked at the x-ray and he said, look, at the previous x-ray, there is the mass, there is a tumor, there is where it's lodged right in between your lungs and the heart. But then he looked at the new x-ray and he said, there is nothing here. And the only thing I can see, the only thing I can see, and wait, wait, the only thing I can see, he said to my mom, he said to my parents there, the only thing I can see is, is, is a scar as if someone operated your son with laser technology. And that was the only option for me to get to get better, you know, to to uh, to get to get healed, laser surgery. That was the only thing that could actually remove that tumor, laser uh, surgery. And they were doing it, but it was too expensive. We couldn't afford it. So God healed me supernaturally and he used something in that you know that I needed in that moment but he healed me and that tumor went away and that is a testimony he replaced that tumor with a vision and a burning desire to preach the gospel and it's been an amazing journey 43 nations 17 almost 18 years of ministry and to God give to God be all the glory for all he has done the enemy wanted to kill me the enemy wanted to take me out but here I am standing by faith telling you that Jesus has a plan for your life and it doesn't matter what the enemy has said over your life it doesn't matter the prognosis the diagnosis Jesus wants to heal you today are you ready just being to pray in the spirit just raise your hands and thank the Lord you may have come here for the first time and you have no clue what is the meaning of being filled with the Holy Spirit. You probably have no clue what prayer is about. You have probably have no clue what, you know, having a relationship with God is about. You, you, may be, you may have been taught about religion and going to church and going to church every Sunday morning and being a good boy or a good girl. You may have been taught religion. But I'm not here to teach you religion. In fact, I'm not preaching about religion. I'm preaching about relationship with God. God is a, a relational God. You may have been taught to go to church out of good conduct, out of good discipline, out of good behavior. But when you do that, you're actually following God out of religion and not out of relationship. You are being sort of forced to do what, you know, the world, or the, 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 the system think all you. If you're a good citizen, you go to church. It's not about being a good citizen. It's about being a child of God. It's about being a child of God. And if you are a child of God, then you will be a good citizen. Then you will be well behaved and all of that. Because God is going to teach you how to walk in His presence. And, and all sin and all of that that you're struggling with, it's going to fade away. And, and before you know it, you're going to experience a breakthrough in your life. You may, be, uh, you may think, I am a really bad, naughty person and I do terrible things. And how come Jesus loves me so much? Well, I can tell you something. Jesus died for your sins. He died for your iniquity he died for everything everything that you consider sinful and dirty he died for are you ready to embrace this gift of salvation 
You may have been brought up in church, but that doesn't make you a, a, a born again believer. You may have been brought up in church, but that doesn't make you a child of God. You, you can come to church for the next 30 years, but unless you walk in a, in a, in a genuine constant uh, legitimate relationship with God and unless you open your heart and you ask the Holy Spirit and you ask Jesus to become your Savior unless you start this covenant you, you begin this covenant relationship with God then you will become a child of God it's through a process of redemption but it's not just redemption, it's adoption through redemption. It's not adoption through learning or adoption through adapting. It's adoption through redemption. Are you ready to experience that? Because he came to those, you know, he went to Israel. He, he actually went to save his own. But they rejected him. They rejected him. And now he has opened his arms and the covenant is available to all of us. Gentiles and non-Gentiles and, you know, uh, Israelites and non-Israelites. The covenant is for all of us. Are you ready to embrace the covenant today? If you are, just close your eyes wherever you are. I know you may be going through some doubts and fears and thinking, well, I'm not capable, I'm not ready, I'm not clean enough. Well, Jesus loves you. It doesn't matter what baggage you're carrying. Jesus loves you. It doesn't matter what problems you've been dragging all these years. Jesus loves you. It doesn't matter all the circumstances you're dealing with. Jesus loves you and He died for your sins. He died so that you can have eternal life. He died so that you can receive receive redemption are you ready to embrace this experience close your eyes right there where you are and just say this prayer after me and we're going to all we're going to uh you're, we're going to help him and we're going to support him in prayer by praying this prayer so that they don't feel uh you know alone so let's all do it jesus today i open my heart i thank you lord for dying for me on the cross I receive this gift of salvation and I give you praise I, and surrender my heart Jesus cleanse me with your precious blood forgive all my sins I surrender all here I am I recognize you are my Savior you're my Redeemer and I surrender I love you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Under this precious anointing, just raise your hands and begin to worship God. Oh, Holy Spirit.